in Ohio, what we've seen a lot of so far are these mineral rights title disputes. Um, so going into that, so the way these issues emerge is you have an owner of the surface parcel up here, um, this grassy area, um, and then if you want to sell that land to someone else, say, um, but you want to keep the mineral rights underneath that land, you can go ahead and do that with a mineral rights reservation. You could even deed that to someone else as well. Um, then you've severed the surface interest from the mineral interest there. Then you get potentially some title disputes. Um, Ohio's Marketable Title Act and Dormant Minerals Act are being litigated a lot these days. Um, courts are still deciding uh, when to apply the 1989 version of the Dormant Minerals Act as opposed to the 2006 version of the Dormant Minerals Act. These are issues that the courts are still sorting out. Um, generally, though, the Marketable Title Act, of which the DMA is a part, um, helps clean up unused encumbrances to land uh, so that landowners can convey a clean marketable title, which is good, uh, but then issues arise regarding, um, for example, the mineral estate owner's property interests. Um, uh, for example, notice that their mineral estate will be forfeited, which is sort of how that act operates. There are a lot of issues there that we don't have time to go into, but um, this issue is being litigated a lot in Ohio state courts these days. Next, we have contract disputes. So this will include royalty payments and calculation disputes and uh, lease termination disputes or held by production issues. Um, so landowners can get paid all kinds of ways uh, from, the, from the producer. Uh, these days that tends to happen in an upfront bonus payment that you hear about. Um, that results in a paid up lease. But then after that, these landowners get royalties. They get a share of the production from these oil and gas wells. Um, well, a lot of litigation these days uh, deals with the exceptions that these producers carve out um, regarding what royalties they, they need to pay out. And you hear a lot in the news, national news even these days, about uh, royalties disputes involving large class actions of, um, of these uh, lessors who um, are disputing the amounts of royalties they're getting from these producers based on these carve outs that they um, are alleging aren't very well defined in those leases. Another contract issue is a production dispute. Um, the basic idea here is um, a lease lasts uh, for a certain set of years, and then after that, it lasts for as long as there's oil coming out of the ground, oil or gas being produced from the ground. Um, so then you get disputes over how much is being produced and whether that satisfies Ohio law on um, the, the secondary term of the habendum clause of the lease. Um, just another issue to be aware of. Torts are the fun stuff, um, so you, you get a lot of suits filed by plaintiff's attorneys relating to negligence, nuisance, trespass to land, conversion, all of the classic torts um, that we learn in law school. Um, and basically, it's uh, one way to explain it is the dispute here, you know, the right diagram will represent um, a plaintiff's attorney's view of, of all of the mayhem that, that ensues when you, when you drill in these wells, right? You have uh, a well that's on fire, right? And you have these, uh, these what they call fractures here that are the length of about 70% about of the total vertical space of that well, right? And of course, it's leaking into the groundwater and that kind of thing. And you know, while there is science to be done on this, you know, the reality is that you go down, here is the, this thin blue line is, is the groundwater layer, that's the ground aquifer. And this is to scale, um, that's very near the surface. And then you need to go down, you know, um, about 5,000 feet to the Marcellus, 7,000 to the Utica, and you know th this is where those hydraulic fractures are occurring, and there's really no incentive for them to exceed um, the depth of, of that layer of rock, um, certainly not to go up two, three layers of rock up um, into there. So this is just a sort of um, visual conception of plaintiffs versus defense um, views on, on, on the tort issues that emerge uh, in shale litigation. We've got some regulatory issues, Clean Air Act issues, Clean Water Act issues. Um, we've got issues in Ohio with municipal ordinances. Um, there's a case that came out of the 9th District, uh, this Beck Energy case. Um, the 9th District held that um, state law regulating oil and gas drilling operations trumps local ordinances. And you may have heard about this. Um, local municipalities, um, you know, sort of uh, asserting their home rule authority to regulate uh, oil and gas operations within their municipal boundaries. Well, in Ohio, um, ODNR uh, controls that, um, and to the extent that those local 
um, local ordinances conflict with ODNR's regulations, ODNR's regulations will trump. This case, that's what was decided in the Ninth District. That has been appealed to the Ohio Supreme Court. Mm -hmm.